Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we are headed off to the dyno with the BMW E92 M3 and the Shelby GT350. But first, before we get going, I do want to give you a quick little backstory on both cars. So let's start off with the Shelby. So when I first got the car, I wanted to get a baseline of how much it was making stock. So I ended up finding this dyno. It was an and it was an outside dyno, and it was a dyno jet. So it was probably reading a little bit higher. But either way, it ended up making 460 wheel. Then after that, I ended up modding the car and I had to take it to another dyno just because I really couldn't get an appointment at the first place which was unfortunate because I really did want to keep it consistent but at the second place that I took it to I really wasn't a fan of it just because the location wasn't that great the shop wasn't really too good they weren't professional but either way no sense in comparing that just because the car was already modded then the third time I ended up putting it back to stock with just the Profex Commander and E54 just because I wanted to see if there was actually a difference between it being completely stock and adding the Profex Commander and ended up dynoing around 488 wheel so about a 30 horsepower difference now today we're taking it back to that same place but the car is fully modded so it has the Profex Commander it has the JLT cold air intake and it has the Luntune for the intake and hopefully a higher ethanol reading right now it's at about a quarter tank of I think E54 but I really can't remember if I ended up mixing it with a little bit of 91 either way we'll end up checking later because I do have E85 that I will be adding so let's see what that brings it up to now as far as the BMW E92 M3 that car it doesn't have a baseline for how much it was making stock because it was never dyno stock but it does have a few mods so it has a BPM tune for 93 octane unfortunately here in Arizona there's no 93 so it's currently on 91 with about two gallons of E54 and it also has a full exhaust with no cap it was dynoed back in Florida with 93 pump gas and it dynoed at about 380 I believe so let's see how much it makes here I mean it's not a 93 it's a totally different dyno so it's probably going to be different but either way I'm curious to see what both of these cars are going to be making today but before that let's go ahead and get a cold start of each and then I'm gonna go ahead and pour E85 into the GC350 and let's check what the ethanol content is Okay guys, so I went ahead and poured the E85 and this is what it's showing right now. <laughs> Only E60. Sometimes this takes some time to go all the way up. Like it'll climb little by little. So hopefully it'll go higher. I have a 45 minute drive so I'll just check periodically while driving or once I get there. So let's see. <laughs> I'm like no, that means I probably mixed it with 91. But either way. We can go ahead and check that later. Right now, both cars are idling. I do want to show you what both of them sound like. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's see. <laughs> it should be fun. So I don't know if you guys can hear. You can only hear the M3. You can't even hear the GC350. And this is exactly what happens whenever I'm driving and the M3 is in front of me, I can't even hear the GT350. I can't even hear my thoughts of how loud that car is, but it sounds amazing. I love it. All right, but with that being said, let's go ahead and get on our way. All right, guys, so we just got to Dino Comp and they just took in the M3 right now. It might be an issue to see if they could strap it onto the dyno just because of the rear diffuser. It's a little bit too low. They were trying to see if they could see the lower control arms. They could see it, so they said that they might go ahead and give it a shot. So they just went ahead and did it first just because that one might be a pain. But let's hope, hopefully, they can get on the dyno just to see what it's making. And then we're going to go with the GT350 and I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what it makes. But they always have some cool cars here. They have this GTR. I'm not sure if it was here last time, but either way, I was just talking to some guy that works here. He said that this GTR is full bolt-on with the flex tune and it's making around 620 to the wheel. And I think that's pretty much what we want the other orange GTR to make. So this is probably a good example. And they have this M5 here. They always have all these different cars. 
I like this. I like this all. These wheels, I think they look very, very good with the black. And check out this SS right here. Pretty cool. Looks like it needs some work, some uh, paint work, but this is nice. I would love to have either one of these or just, wow, look at the inside too. Definitely need some work. But I would love to hopefully own a classic in the future and have it as a project car, restore it. But let's see. <laughs> I think they, they always have. I remember this GT500 here last time. So I think, uh, I don't know if it's the owner's car or I don't know, but it's it's been here and it's been a while since the last time I was here. But let's see. <laughs> hopefully they can get that M3 strapped so we can see what it's making. And then my baby. <laughs> So they were able to strap it down. Good thing. So let's see now what they will be runs on the car. This is going to be crazy loud, so let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you that this car is the best sounding car in the garage, no lie. Like, I'll give it to it. I wish that my Shelby could sound as loud as this one day. And honestly, I think I'm deaf, but of joy. <laughs> Just because that is such an amazing car to hear. Whenever I'm driving and that car is in front of me, I basically can't even hear my thoughts. I can't even hear my exhaust in my Shelby GZ350. But I love it because it sounds amazing. <laughs> There's like a Subi line up here, except for that car. <laughs> I'm not sure if these are cars that they work on and they're here towards the back, but I don't know. <laughs> so these are some of the cars that they're currently working on. I always love coming here just to see, but this is crazy. This GTR right here, first of all, I like these. I like how it's done. I like these uh, fenders. Really, really like it, and I like how it has the canards. I think this one was outside last time. Either way, this car currently makes 1,200 to the wheel. That's insane. But this is a nice and clean Fox body. Oh, and by the way, he said that they're currently working on this to make it a 1,600 wheel car. So <laughs> I am like, I, I don't even know. I, I, I can't even think of how that's going to feel. But I really like this shop because it's really clean. Like it took me some time to pick a shop that I really liked. But this is it. Oh. Okay, so they're setting up the GT350 on the dyno. I'm so excited. Gonna get a good view from all angles. <laughs> Let's see how much it's making. to be 
like the M3. <laughs> Okay guys, so now I'm back home and it's time to go over the numbers. I'm really happy and quite impressed, especially with the M3 just because I really didn't think it was going to make that number that it made. But let me go ahead and show you. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so here's a dyno sheet. So it made it 369 horsepower and torque is about mid 200, so 250. So I think that's pretty good. I know it's not a fast car, but I have to say that it does make up for it with the sound and just the way it handles and it performs. It's really, really fun taking it to the track and cannon carving. And like I said, there's no baseline on this car stock. Back then when it was dynoed in Florida with the same mods, so with the full exhaust, no cats, and the BPM tune with 93 octane, it dynoed 380, but then again, that's just a different dyno. This one compared to the other one. And this one, when we took the car, is that it reads lower than the dyno jet. So I mean, more or less the same. It has uh, 91 octane with two gallons of E54. So, not bad. I think it's pretty decent for, for this car. So now for my Shelby G350. Are you guys ready? I'm really happy with these numbers. All right, so let's go show you the dyno sheet. So this is it. It's making 507 and the torque is at 400. I think that's awesome with, I would say, how mildly tuned it is. And this is what it was making before, so I took it to that same dyno place and it was just stock with the Profex Commander and it made 488 and about the same torque, so 400. And I just did that just because I really wanted to get a baseline and compare it now just to see the difference. And I mean, I'm pretty happy with that and it's just mildly tuned. I'm pretty sure I can get more if I add more things, headers, but for now it just has the colder intake with the Luntun for the intake and the Profex Commander and E60. I honestly thought it was gonna be a higher ethanol content, but just thinking that I probably ended up missing, mixing the E54 with some 91, and then that was what was left there, so it was probably even lower than E54. Mixing in. All right. <laughs> mixing in the three quarters of E85 just brought up to E60, which isn't bad. Last time when I dynoed it and it got and made 488, it had E54 content, so around the same, but I'm pretty happy with this. This is just the beginning, just getting these dynos, just to keep getting baselines as I keep doing more mods to my car. And I know this is a pretty short video, but once again, I just wanted to know what I'm making with the Profex Commander. I'm really happy using it and with my mods and the M3. <laughs> I know some people say that this car is neglected and it's not given any love, but that's not true. It's not neglected and it does have plenty of TLC. It's just the mods will come, but later on, for now, we want to focus on the Shelby GT350, the Camaro, and the GTR. And speaking of the Camaro, I have finally <laughs> reached my break-in mile, so it's finally at 1500. So the next video with the Z01 will be the oil change and finally breaking in, taking it all away. So I'm so excited for that. I've been waiting for this day for so long and it's finally here. <laughs> and I'll also be getting a short shift, an MGW short shifter. I know that some of you have told me, when are you gonna be getting that? It's taking me a long time, but I've been waiting on a tool to come in order to do that install, so I can't wait for that. It's going to be so much better when shifting for the Shelby GT350, so stay tuned for that as well. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.